All right, we're live. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Hey, everybody. It is so great to be here with you today. I have Kaipacha, evolutionary astrologer, new paradigm astrologer. Kaipacha, that name couldn't be more perfect at this point in time. I'm sure for a long time you were saying that and people were like, what are you talking about, new paradigm? Now it's like, okay, got it. Sooner the better. <laughs> exactly. So we'll be talking about that today. Um, but before we dive in, Kaipacha and I both share a love for and background and experience with um, Rudolf Steiner's work through the Waldorf schools. And one of the things that the Waldorf school does is um, they do a verse when they start the day and when they end the day. So Kaipacha posted a verse on Instagram the other day, and I said, oh, God, I love that one. So we're going to start with that, and we're going to end with it. So Kaipacha, if you want to go ahead and pull that up, okay. um, and you all can, you, can, you can read it on the screen or just close your eyes, but this is a verse from Rudolf Steiner. It's called A Verse for Our Times. We must eradicate from the soul all fear and terror of what comes toward us from out of the future. We must acquire serenity in all feelings and sensations about the future. We must look forward with absolute equanimity to everything that may come. And we must think only that whatever comes is given to us by a world directive full of wisdom. It is part of what we must learn in this age, namely, to live out of pure trust without any security in existence. Trust in the ever-present help of the spiritual world Truly, nothing else will do if our courage is not to fail us. And let us seek the awakening from within ourselves every morning and every evening. Mm. Thank you. So, Kaipacha, <laughs> we knew this was going to be big. Did you have any sense that it would be this big? I did not. I did not. I knew that it was the end of the patriarchy, not just a Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto cycle, not just a, you know, this or just that or just the other thing. I knew it was big. I felt that it could happen more smoothly. I thought that it would involve more economics, belief systems, maybe weather, climate change, maybe food supply, but actual people dying and leaving their bodies, passing on and, you know, all of the, you know, everything kind of hitting at the same time, social isolation. I was, I, uh, so it's, it's much uh, deeper, bigger, wider broader than I was hoping for or expecting. Yeah. And um, one of the words that you used during the 2020 event, the forecast event we did in January was reckoning, you know, a, a time of reckoning that we would be moving into. And how do you, I mean, do you still feel, and I know you also talked about death and resurrection. So let's just talk about those themes a little bit and, and how you're seeing those now that we actually have context. We actually have the storyline unfolding. Yeah. The, I'm actually giving a talk on it's Pluto square Eris, a time of reckoning in the online summit that we're doing. Um, and it was that, it was that square that brought up this time of reckoning because Eris is not only the goddess of discord, but she is in a way a goddess of death. She would uh, go through the battlefields after the war was over, delighting 
at the sight of blood and all of the remains of the dead soldiers on the battlefield. She's the sister of Ares, the god of war. And so she is a, a very Kali figure. I see her very much as a destroyer goddess moving through the sign of Aries in square to Pluto going and they both move very slowly. So it's through 2019, it came uh, all of 2020 and, and, and all into 2021. And if you give it one or two degree orb, you could say 2018 to 2022 mm. with just a one or two degree bore. I'm only talking like exact conjunctions. There's like, you know, uh, more than five of them. There's seven exact squares and uh, not conjunctions, squares. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to me, this Eris, you know, moving through Aries is, is, you know, beginning and in order to begin again, it's what I call, we're going now through a global reset. This is a global reset. We are just getting leveled. You know, it's just, uh, it's a, we're going to, we're going to start, start over from scratch economically and politically and personally and, uh, you know, health wise. It's, it's, this is a, this is a major, you know, restart. And I think that a lot of that has to do with resistance to the evolutionary process so it's it's when we fight and resist evolution that is the cause of pain and suffering if we cooperated with the evolutionary intentions of gaia the way i feel is like we are peach fuzz okay on the peach of gaia <laughs> and gaia has her own evolutionary process you know, each planet has its own evolutionary process. I mean, you know, spiritual science, uh, everything is a spirit. <laughs> Gaia is a spirit, right? And we have spirits of time and spirits of the curiosities and the dynamies and the seraphim and cherubim and blah, 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 it goes on and on and on. But, you know, we have the all kinds of spirits and Gaia has her, you know, she is an evolving being. And if we look at it that we're hitchhikers, on her process, okay, you know, she can just, you know, she's shaken us off before. We have Noah's flood, <laughs> okay, whether you want to say that's Atlantis or not, but, you know, you know, Steiner says that, you know, basically, uh, this is the fourth reincarnation of Earth. So, you know, we are definitely, you know, like I say, it's, it's a, uh, I think part of it is humbling. You know, it started out that, uh, you know, uh, we were the center of the universe. And then we find out that the sun is the center <laughs> and we're orbiting around the sun. <laughs> and then we find out <laughs> that the sun is going around a galaxy. And then we find that we're this tiny little galaxy. <laughs> I mean, you know what? We're getting smaller and smaller and smaller all the time. <laughs> And this is, this is part and parcel of the yin and the yang, the patriarchy, the matriarchy. I mean, we can just look at this. Chiron is in Aries. Eris is in Aries. We are dealing with, okay, distorted, suppressed, okay, wounded masculine energy. And uh, it's rampant. It's just rampant. It's, uh, you know, uh, for the last 6,500 years of patriarchy. We have sought to dominate this planet, to exploit her resources, to rape her of everything that she's got and pollute her waters and her air and her earth with all of our waste. I mean, we have just, we are headed towards dis extinction. Whether it's climate change or whether it's, you know what viruses are, Viruses are excretions from cells that are stressed. They're stressed, they fill up with toxins and they excrete a virus. And then this virus goes out and spreads. 
Now, whether this is natural or whether it was made in a laboratory, in some ways, you know, people are fighting about that, but it doesn't really matter that much. The fact is, okay, we need to really look at ourselves and how we are living in harmony with, you know, with nature. It's this, the difference between being a custodian of nature and being an exploiter of nature. And this masculine, conquering, narcissistic, self-centered, I, me, my, I want my personal liberties. And it's, it's very much what we're doing is we're moving into this age of Aquarius and the opposite is Leo. So we're going to be dealing with this energy of my, my personal rights and my goods and my toilet paper and, you know, my ventilators and my country and my, my, me, my, me, my, me, my. my. <laughs> or we're going to move into a new paradigm. We're going to move into a society filled with individuals that are awakened and they're aware that they're part of a group like cells in an organism and we need to be aware of the other cells in the organism we need to be cooperating politically okay we need to be co cooperating economically and physically with each other and socially and really taking care of our elders I was, I was, you know, I was told a long time ago, you know, by the indigenous peoples, a, a culture can be measured by, you know, how well they take care of their elders. And if we want to measure some of our societies by that today, I'd say that we have a pretty sad situation. So I think that the feminine whether you want to call it Eris, Kali, uh, you know, Black Moon Lilith, she's also moving through <laughs> Aries, <laughs> right? You know, um, yeah, this is really the start of, and what I feel, I even shared it on Facebook yesterday, this beautiful, uh, uh, I will rise. It's so gorgeous. You have to check it out. I should share it with your page. Is it art or? A... It's the feminine. It's a, it's a video with music and a poem mm. Uh, mm. of I Shall Rise. And there's, and there's this one part in it where they morph. Okay. The, you, know, uh, you know, all the pictures, all the ancients, the, all the grandmothers from Egypt and Bali and, you know, and the faces just, you know, from uh, the Virgin Mary, you know, it, it's a, I mean, and it's all the faces of the feminine. It's just amazing. Mm. I'm going to snatch a little piece of it for my next Pele report. <laughs> nice. So. I mean, I can so, just keep talking, but. So you're seeing this as the reset in which we are being asked to return to a more harmonious life with the planet and with each other. And how, like, how do you think we, we actually get there? Is it, is it through this humbling process? Is it through, because there's a lot of different storylines out there. Some, in, some of which would take us way further away from nature and harmony with the planet and with each other. Some that would bring us closer to it. So how do you see that? I mean, obviously we're at a crossroads. I mean, we're at a pivotal yeah. moment and for each individual out there, how do they navigate the direction that they'd love to see, you know, the, the, the more harmonious direction? Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's a number of different things going on. And, I, and this is a, what we can say is it's a long process. And Gaia's got all the time in the world. This idea that uh, this is, you know, uh, going to be taken care of, or we're just going to, you know, snap into this or snap into that. I don't see that happening at all, particularly with the amount of resistance that there is, particularly from the Western countries who are very, uh, you know, 
liberty uh, self-oriented and um, not willing to uh, curtail their own uh, pleasures, needs, wants, and desires for the good of the whole. And this is whole, uh, this is the whole thing is a process of becoming aware of our unity, you know, of being one with the whole of, of with each other. What is it? The butterfly, you know, flaps its wings in Thailand and there's a hurricane in Florida or, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, we're all part where we're, the unified field is becoming more of a reality and a reality and a reality. And so to me, we have these two different kind of options happening. And Aquarius is, you know, it's funny, it's Aquarius even has the two different waves and they're not even connected. You know, Pisces has the two fish, but they're connected. <laughs> yeah. Aquarius is two separate ones, right? And to me, one is the elite. Okay, the billionaire uh, robots, one percent that uh, enslaves you know the, the you know the whole QAnon and the whole you know conspiracy theories and David Ikes and all this you know kind of thing where yes we're going to be a slave planet you know according to you know and they're and they're going to inject little you know uh, computers in us and uh, you know run our lives and whatever you know da, 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 you know I mean there's you know um, and we need to fight. And we need to resist and we need to, you know, destroy and drain the swamp and, you know, uh, indict and, you know, you know, take care of all the bad black hats or whatever, you know, I mean, and, you know, the other, you know, the other is that, you know, we come into this age of Aquarius, like was in the hair <laughs> musical back in the 60s, <laughs> you know, where we eat organic and we're healthy and we're aware of each other and we live in peace and harmony with our planet and with each other and you know to me one is capitalism one could be socialism i mean i think bernie dropping out of the race for the united states was really super sad i think that you know the the united states is like atlantis it's a leader for the whole planet and hollywood and washington and the politics that are going on there is like really powerfully influencing, you know, the future course of events on our planet and people's psyches in a very big way. And, you know, when we put, when we really look at it, you know, this dismantling, I don't care, you know, the, the, the white hats think that Trump is going to save the day. Okay. Uh, he's just another capitalist. Uh, he, he could drain the swamp and get rid of the bad guys and then uh, just, you know, build more walls and build up the economy and the stock market at the expense of the environment and uh, the poor people. And, uh, you know, just do the exact same thing that, the, that they think they're getting rid of. So, you know, to me, it's a change in consciousness. It's, a, it's an educational process. So what you're saying and what you're asking is what individual people can do. We can look at the big process, but individually for me, I feel that this is a graduation process. Saturn has to do with graduation. Saturn is moving into Aquarius. It's moving out of Capricorn. It's moving out of its conjunction with Pluto and it's beginning a whole new cycle. And this beginning of this new cycle, you know, to me is this graduation. And if we use evolutionary astrology, we know that there's three major evolutionary stages. And to me, it's the consensus. The consensus stage is three quarters of the world's population that's following an external authority, that's looking to a president or a dictator or, uh, you know, uh, you know, People's Republic or, you know, is looking for an external guidebook. And it's looking for someone to tell them what is good and right and wrong and success and failure and da da da, da. Well, they're graduating. <laughs> so three quarters of the planet needs to graduate out of being sheep that are following somebody else. And they need to like own and begin to think for themselves and create for themselves. This is a time where we need to create new economies. 
We need to create new jobs for ourselves. We need to really become, okay, and this is Uranus going through Taurus. We need to like really innovate. We need to reinvent ourselves so that we are more self-sufficient and we are not so dependent upon, okay, you know, these external corporations, Bezos and Elon Musk or Bill Gates. I mean, it's just like, you know, so, you know, we need entrepreneurship, you know, and it, and it is, we need to come out of this herd mentality of following to self-initiation. And then you've got the 20% that are in the individuated stage, okay, and, you know, they've, you know, they've, awakened and they are the entrepreneurs and they are the geniuses and the scientists and the smarty pants and the, you know they got the money and they're not really you know uh, their bank accounts are not being you know slaughtered okay you know by the economic uh, recession okay we you know so we have these people okay you're billionaires and they're graduating out of the individuated stage into the spiritual stage <laughs> out of it's all about me and my money and I'm on top and I'm in control. Well, their graduation has to do with becoming philanthropists. It has to do with, you know, giving away free vaccines and free health care and uh, free ventilators and, you know, free tests. And, you know, I mean, there's a, a whole movement that I'm looking at now is just, you know, this is called helicopter cash. It's, you know, basically that, you know, part of this age of Aquarius can be that the government, the governments, give everybody a basic uh, uh, enough to pay their mortgage and buy their food for the rest of their lives. You know, we can set up an economy where everybody is taken care of. Everybody gets food, clothing, and shelter. This is definitely doable at this time. We can make up the supply lines and the supply change. And I, I mean, I've got, I've got whole, uh, you know, information you know, regarding, okay, that this is, this is, uh, you know, been already floated. And part of, I think, what's going on, this bailout, this $2 trillion bailout is a perfect example of, aha, <laughs> you know, the government, the government could be, get, I mean, 1200 is a pop in the bucket. They, I mean, but basically, you know, they, you know, we can create new economies where this is not going to happen again. But who so, controls that? I mean, and how, like, doesn't that just make the control structure? Like, who's deciding how much people get and who gets it? And, I mean, that feels so, like, consolidating control into very, very few hands. Well, it's... Uh, you know, it's, it's a group. It has to be Aquarius is all about groups and it's about, you know, just, you know, governments becoming, you know, really in truth by the people for the people <laughs> and of the people. Right? right. I mean, it's a, it's a, this, this is a, you know, this is a flip turnaround from a hierarchy. Okay. To where, you know, we get switched around and, you know, people are, you know, people are together calling the shots and we've got the technology you know, to absolutely abolish the electoral college and to you know, absolutely, you know, bring in new ways where everybody can be uh, heard and everybody can, you know, have input. But the way that I'm seeing this happening, uh, it's going to take some time. I think that we've got Neptune moving through Pisces, okay, you know, for, uh, you know, until 2024 2025 and it's dissolving the illusions you know we're in a process of disillusionment for the next few years pluto doesn't move into aquarius until 20 you know 23 24 so you know 20 you know i think when pluto moves into aquarius neptune moves into aries and last but not least you know it's really that i think um uranus has to move you know, into Gemini. And in 2026, when Uranus moves into Gemini, it's going to make a very nice trine up to Pluto in Aquarius, a sextile over to Neptune in Aries. And there's, you know, things are going to start to curve, you know, the, you know, the, the, the curve <laughs> is going to flatten. So the amount of pain, suffering, loss, disease, and death that we experience between now and then, 
to me is just really how much Gaia needs to teach us and how good of a students we are in learning her lessons. And, you know, taking these tests, you always have tests before graduation. So, you know, if we're all graduating, we've got some tests to do here. And I was looking at this curve yesterday of the Spanish flu and it, and it had this little curve, <laughs> which is like where they said we are now, this, the, the little curve with the virus. And then uh, in the fall, that was the big curve. Like the big curve is coming. And we know that we've got, okay, you know, uh, Jupiter and Saturn are both going to be going retrograde. They're both going back to visit Pluto. Okay, you know, and September, October, November, okay, you know, is I, you know, we may think we, we're going to come out of this like, oh, the weather warmed up. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the curve is lowering and let's all run out in our bikinis on the beach and everything. But, you know, this is a, this is temporary. The virus is already mutated, mutated into three different strains. Okay. And it can go into many, many more different strains. And even if they make a vaccine for one or two, okay, it can mutate into another. So what I'm saying is, is that, you know, Gaia is ingenious. We read this verse at the beginning of our talk, divine intelligence. <laughs> there is a divine intelligence. There is a divine intention. There is a bigger, huger evolutionary process that we need to listen to, adapt to, learn from, and grow into, or we are going to continue. And I don't care if it's forest fires, hurricanes, viruses, rising oceans you know it's it's like we have to like get into this mindset <laughs> that there's nothing out there it's not happening to us that we it's it's a you know and this is astrology as above so below as without so within the macrocosm mirrors the microcosm so if there's anything that each one of us can do, you know, personally and individually, to me, it's meditation. To me, it's, you know, getting out of our polarized left brain, good, bad, right, wrong, white hat, black hat, yes, no, me, you, da, 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 you know, and, and still the mind, still the mind and build the magnetic field of the heart which is stronger than the magnetic field of the brain and get out of this polarized consciousness that there's somebody doing it to somebody else. I was actually thinking about this whole thing with fear because I had somebody go, I'm leaving your community because uh, you are afraid of 5g or, you know, you're building fear around 5g and there's, you know, there's this whole big thing now, don't be afraid. It's all a sham, you know, it's, and it's, it's like, we got to really look because the very same people are saying, don't be afraid of the virus. Be afraid of Bill Gates, <laughs> be afraid of the cabal, <laughs> you know, be afraid of, you know, the, the Illuminati. I mean, and they're building their own fear about, you know, some other invisible dark force. <laughs> so, you know, I think the people that are afraid of, you know, a virus that's actually killing people <laughs> you know, have a little bit more on the ball. <laughs> Then, you know, people that are like, you know, building fear around like this is whole uh, big, huge conspiracy. I mean, this is like insane. Anyway, gosh, I'm really well, I think the point is that and eat. OK, so let's just take any scenario whose fear is more legitimate than other people's fear, which one's right or which one's wrong. It actually doesn't really matter because something that you said in the beginning or towards the beginning is really important for us to remember that if we go into whatever the next phase of this reality of this world is with the same level of consciousness, inevitably we will create the same results. There's no, there's no way for us to transcend out of this cycle that isn't serving the planet, the animals, the people, the whole, until we 
are in an entirely different level of consciousness through which we see the world, through which we make decisions, through which we create our structures, all of it, 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 it we will continue to create the same thing over and over. And, you know, I, I think that that's, that's a really important thing for us to remember. And that's why what you're saying about meditation and what you're saying about the mind and, and these things is so important. And it can seem so passive or insignificant. And I can see that like, no, there's got to be something more I could do. There's got to be something bigger I can do. It's like, well, but if as above, so below, if so as within, so without and vice versa, then it's the most important thing. It's really the only thing. And it truly is the only thing we have any control over. So I, it's, it's really interesting to, to witness all the dialogues and to witness how the different things affect each person, including myself. And to, I come back to this point over and over, though. It's like, maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. Maybe, you know, there, there's so many different potential truths right now. But at the end of the day, if we stay the same, I see, you know, my daughter said this, oh God, she's so wise. Yesterday we're driving. She goes, mama, I really hope it doesn't just go back to normal and everyone and, and, and people forget to really make a change. Like, I really hope that it really just doesn't just go back to normal. And I went, whoa, yeah, wow. Like, yeah. yes, because that's taking a, like whenever any of you, and I know so many of you have gone through crisis, you've gone through like really, really dark periods in your life. If we don't like find the gold in it and get to the very depth of what it has to offer us, then it's a wasted crisis. It's a wasted trauma, you know, but if we can get into it and find that ability to, to really shift the way that we're seeing things, like truly shift it. Uh, you know, then we're doing our children a disservice and we're doing the future generations a disservice. And this is a really huge opportunity for each one of us. The crossroads is not just external. It's not just, you know, the government or the cabal or whatever. It's, it's all of our, um, I think, yeah. I, and, and it's, it's at that verse in the beginning, which we will end with is really like we are being asked to trust at a level that I don't know if if most of us have been asked to trust at this level. Like it's like a, whew, all right, like I'm jumping out of that plane. It feels like without a parachute, but like something's going to catch us, you know, so eventually, someday, sometime, you know. And, and that whole surrendering is kind of a feminine, you know, it's like I am going to surrender some of my control and trust to the spiritual world. This is not a super uh, masculine, egoic, I am going to conquer, I am going to beat it, I am going to, uh, you know, revolt or rebel. It's, it's actually, it's a very, you know, it is a passive and, and, and we're, you know, and we can feel after thousands of years of male domination that it's do nothing. What, what, what does he call it? The do nothing Democrats, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, uh, that it's, you know, it's lazy to like, you know, meditate and sit at home and do nothing and whatever. But, you know, in, in reality, there's, you know, there's, this allows for a greater, broader intelligence to kind of, you know, descend. I really feel like it's um, mother nature telling her kids to go to your room. I mean, just think about this. It's like, go to your room, stay home, reflect and think about what you have been doing and what you have done and, to, and, and really decide consciously if that is what you want to continue doing. Do you want to continue being a producer and a consumer? You know, there's just so much, you know, that, you know, has led up to this point. We can reflect, you know, if we, if we really see how everything is connected and this didn't just come out of nowhere or some laboratory or some bat, but, you know, it's just like, you know, uh, you know, our world has come to a place 
where people were stressed. Look at 2019. Before, you know, before this, people were stressed and it was all about work and it was all about survival. And part of the all about work and all about survival was because we were spending all of our money on, you know, you know, new consumer products and items and, you know, uh, you know, dates and bars and Tinder and meetups and, you know, you know, and it's, it, it's just been all about this kind of, you know, instant gratification. It's, it's like the technology you know, has really come so far, okay, that, you know, we can get outside of the natural rhythms of nature into this hyperspace where we want everything now and there's no patience needed. And it's just like, this is a major, like, let's reset, <laughs> let's look at, and let's, you know, use more consciousness rather than going from, Fulfill desire to fulfill desire to fulfill desire to fulfill desire to fulfill desire. Pause. <laughs> that's the that's where freedom is is between the impulse and the action. Yeah, and and the longer you can pause between the impulse and the action, the more freedom you have to choose that action out of the impulse. And this is consciousness. This is Uranus moving through Taurus, and he's doing it, you know, with the economy. He's doing it with money. You know, it's just like, it's not, it's not there. You better spend it wisely. Okay. And you better look at, you know, how you're earning it and where it's going, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it's just really, it's all good. I, I you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a painful process. Like I say, I, I think that, and we can be in for more pain. Because I don't see, you know, the majority really accepting, you know, go to your room, meditate, think about this, contemplate, create a new paradigm. I'm seeing a, a huge number of people that they just want to go back to the way it was. They can't stand this. I want to go back to the same job I was doing. I want to go back to the same bar that I went to. I want to go back to the, I want to go back, 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 back. And as long as people are wanting you know, to go back, we're not going to be going, you know, you know, I mean, this is, this is like, and, and I think, you know, like I say, going back is only going to create a, a mutated virus. That's going to just come back with us again, or it's going to, you know, there's going to be some, you know, other catastrophe with Uranus and Taurus. Okay. And Pluto's still, you know, moving through Capricorn and earth sign. And, and we know that Aquarius ruled by Uranus has to do with trauma, sudden unexpected events. And, you know, these are, you know, these are intense times of transition. These next six years can be, it's like, you know, I mean, You've got kids, right? You know, birth can be, there's a lot of different ways to give birth. You know, I, I, I mean, our third one just, <laughs> you know, slid out of there like, yeah, I'm here. You know, the first one was breach. <laughs> you know, we had to turn her around. <laughs> she had a big head and it was really hard getting her out of there. And it's, you know, I mean, it's just like, wow, you can have, you know, nice underwater birth where, you know, it's just like, you know, absolutely wonderful, you know, and mama can squat down and do it naturally or, you know, go into, you know, the, the high, I mean, whatever, you know, I mean, there's all different ways of giving birth. We are giving birth to a new paradigm. It's like, like, like it or not, take as long as you want. Uh, we can, you know, there's, you know, you know, suffer as much as you want. Um, you know, it's, uh, it will, I think it, it will come. I'm an optimist. I feel that we are on an evolutionary trajectory and that those that are in the spiritual stage Right. Or the, you know, even it's like the individuated, you know, helps the consensus, the spiritual helps the individuated. It's education. What well, if there's anything that we can do for people, of course, I've been saying it for years. If you want job security, you know, just get into the healing arts. <laughs> you know, that was, uh, you know, that was before the virus. But, you know, but now, you know, you know, through all of this, 
it is it is about reaching our brothers and sisters it is about maintaining trust faith surrender you know kind of sharing and teaching the methods and whether it is the the gene keys or astrology or yoga or the I Ching or i mean there are so many Okay, crystals and shamanism and da 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 da. da. I mean, uh, you, know, you can have suitcases full of various, you know, uh, tools, instruments, techniques, you know, to, you know, assist uh, ourselves and the ones that we love, you know, to a uh, a smooth birthing process. Totally, it's uh, we were we were talking before we went live about how some days I'm finding some days I wake up and it's just like this pit in my stomach, like this just like heaviness. And sometimes the practices help to clear it. And sometimes they don't. And sometimes you just have to like walk with it and feel it and just be with it. And, and then I was thinking about the people that don't have any tools. They don't have astrology. They don't have yoga. They don't have meditation. They don't, they have not gotten to that place yet in their life where they've, they've found these things. And I, I, I think, I know, I think, oh my gosh, with all of that, this is challenging. Like with a cap, I mean, all caps challenging, not just, this is challenging. Like this is challenging. And so without it, it's like, oh my God, I, I was thinking about the people that would maybe wake up and turn on the news and have that news blaring all day. And, and then just, try to live it's like oh my god just talk about white water so yes i hear what you're saying like this is a time not only to utilize those tools like in their fullest you know in the darkest times of my life i remember day, like years where every single day i woke up with that pit in my stomach and the only time i didn't have it was when i was doing yoga or doing hula <laughs> Otherwise, like those were my moments of just like, okay, like I can breathe. It's okay. I'm here. You know, maybe, maybe the pit would come right back after, but at least I have those moments of like, you know, clarity and peace, yeah. which is a big deal. You know, if we can have just even a few of those moments, it, those are, those moments are enough. And I've said this so many times recently, those moments are enough for God, for light, for inspiration, for revelation, whatever it is to come through and change us, change us on a very, very deep level. So it's like pull everything out right now. And, and I was, gosh, I was doing a, a yoga this morning on Gaia.com um, and I was thinking, I need to give this to my brother. Like I, I want him to have this because I think it would really help. It was a really good one. And, and that's what you're saying, like sharing these practices with people and um oh yeah you know and just being holding each other through this which you know you're nobody is alone in this you were we're and yes everybody's experiencing it at different levels and and the arguments that get into whose pain is more painful than other people's pains is like oh my god no like we're just like we're going through it you know we're going through it yeah. um and anything that's pitting us really against each other is just <sighs> not helpful in the long run. I mean, we are really seeing, I am really seeing for sure with my moon in Gemini, man. We are social beings. Oh my gosh, my moon in Gemini too. Come on, you know, come on, you know, oh my gosh, yes. You know, I mean, uh, you know, just, you know, the idea of, you know, going to a concert, you know, or just, you know, yeah, you know, nostalgia, you know, really. I, I just would hang out in a coffee shop to do my writing and do my work just because I like to be around people. Like, yeah. I don't even need to talk to anybody all day. It's just like, yeah. it's just the, around the energy of humans. It's it's invigorating for me. Yeah. So, yeah. This is, a, this is a really good reminder to value, you know, value our relationships, value society, you know, value other people that, you know, we, yeah, you know, love is, you know, binding and bonding and unifying and bringing us together. And, and it's a huge part of life. You know, and Kaibacha, we also share the Hawaii connection. And I've been thinking so much about 
how the Hawaiians lived here. And I'm not trying to make, you know, paint some picture of utopia. I know they had their things, but when it comes to living in harmony with the land, I, I feel like they had it down. And, you know, one of the things I was thinking, I, I um, was thinking about how they had the people that were like the gatherers, you know, they were the ones like doing the tarot, growing the tarot and growing the, the, the food. And then they had the, far, the uh, fishermen and women that would be in charge of, 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 of bringing food from the sea and they would share across, you know, the, the people up country and the people down at the ocean and they would share. And I mean, there was so much beauty. And when, and when, and when, when people came over to, to take over the land here, the concept of land ownership was so foreign that they thought it was a joke. They literally, their consciousness could right. not wrap. It was like, well, that's like selling the sky. Like you can't sell pieces of the sky. You can't own and sell pieces of the land. You know, they, it really didn't, they didn't understand it. And so, you know, they, yeah, they were selling things off for a dollar because they didn't, they were like, yeah, whatever. I don't even know what you're talking about, you know? So it is, and have you read the Anastasia books? Yeah. The Anastasia series? <laughs> I mean, the Dutch nooks and the whole, that I, I'm going to go back to that. And actually, I think Anna on my team just started reading that again. But this idea that each one of us has this plot of land that we're responsible for cultivating and, t and stewarding and taking care of and, and that it gets shared throughout the community. That's, for me, Kaipacha, that one feels more like it feels more serving in some ways than the idea. And I'm not to discount your, what you were bringing up earlier, but the idea that there's some central group like distributing to everybody, it's like, maybe, I don't know. It seems even more plausible to me that each community is, is really, is really because it's so intertwined caring for each other and, 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 and taking care of each other. And, because the thing with the central thing, like handing everything out, it's like, there's, there's Don't a big get me wrong with that. <laughs> okay. All right. I won't, I won't. I just, that, that one to me feels. All like I meant maybe... was that nobody should have to worry about clothing, food, and shelter. Right. Which the Hawaiians had covered. Oh my gosh. They had the ones who made the kappa, which is the cloth and everything. And everyone had their place and ev not, but not in like some weird thing where you like some caste society where you're stuck and you can't you know it was it was voluntary it was like I have hula in me so at, from a young age I know that my role my contribution is going to be a spiritual one I'm going to to dance and and raise the vibration with my body and with my chant I mean that's my contribution you know so and it was thought of that way not like oh I'm stuck as a hula dancer or I'm stuck as a fisherman you know it's like we're going to work together and everybody has a role. And I, and I can see that being such a beautiful reality. I mean, really beautiful reality. And so, I mean, and th this is where, you know, astrology is so amazing because I, I feel that each person holds keys to this blueprint that we can bring about on this planet, this new paradigm that you're talking about. And so really connecting into like, what's, what is my contribution? And, yeah, it's going to be, it's amazing to watch and witness the process and every, anybody who's given birth knows that it's, I don't think anybody, no matter what, even if they say it was blissful, I don't know that you would categorize it as like the most comfortable thing you've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> but is it the most empowering? Is it the most enlightening? Is it the most life-changing? Yeah, <laughs> it can be. It really can be. And like you said, there's lots of different ways to give birth. And I've done both. I've done two different, very different ways. Two very different ways. One, put all my trust in a hospital and in doctors that didn't knew, know me and it just complete, psh, I trust you to do this. I'll just go and I'll just have the baby and I'll take my epidural and boom, I'll have a baby. Like, whoo, whoa, that's not the way it worked out. Not even close. Uh -huh. Second one, I'm going to do the birth at home in the water with the with ceremony. I, when I was in ceremony, it was amazing. It yeah. wasn't comfortable still, but it was amazing. Is amazing so we're in that we're in that birth is such a good analogy Kaipacha, are you um ready to revisit that verse 
oh, before we even go there, like we, we should end with the verse for real. But before we go there, I'd love to talk about your event because this event that you were going to be doing in Costa Rica, which I was like, oh, I want to go, I want to go and I want to bring my daughters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, you're bringing it online. You're bringing it online and people can join you online. I think it's awesome that you're still doing it and people need it now more than ever. And maybe you're going to be able to impact so many more people because you are going to be doing it virtually. And yes, it's different. I mean, doing yoga together in a group is very different um, than doing it online, but you're still doing it. And I think it's great. So do you want to tell people about it? Yeah, I, I am. I'm going to, I'm going to have the video camera right here and I'm going to do yoga in the backyard. Awesome. I mean, the nice thing is that, yeah, there can be way more people, you know, people that couldn't, you know, afford to, you know, fly down here and stay on the beach or whatever. So, you know, I mean, the price is like dribbles, you know, and, uh, and the content is still massive. We're even going to have virtual dinner parties. Oh, so we could all get together and even have video and, uh, you know, my audio conversations with each other and, you know, Facebook group page and a, a question and answer forum. But then it is May 4 to 10 of from morning until night. It's all recorded, but, you know, you could be with, you know, you could go on this whole journey of like letting go of everything and just immersing yourselves in all of the astrology of your natal chart of the transits of, you know, I mean, and just like, you know, really experience the, the glory, wonder, magnificence, intelligence, uh, written in the wisdom of the stars for an entire week. And, um, so, and it's all recorded. So you can, come back five years later if you, you know, if you missed a talk or, you know, something like that. So you could re-listen to the same talk over and over. So it's a, it's great for people that are into astrology. We've got uh, Rick Levine, Nadia Shaw, Maurice Fernandez, the whole dream team, uh, you know, with myself. It's uh, so you get different faces, different perspectives you know, looking at things in different ways, uh, you know, Julius Sin is from Australia, Sol is from Norway. So we have kind of a, you know, an, an international uh, group of uh, astrologers that are presenting. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, we just did a like a two and a half hour webinar on it yesterday. Everybody talked and we gathered people's questions so that we could incorporate people's questions into our presentations it's so good and uh and we are we're offering fifty dollars off until tomorrow noon nice nice so all right i mean of our yeah this That's is perfect i didn't know that <laughs> well go ahead um, we're gonna put the link in the chat and we'll put the link in the description so you can just uh, of this uh yeah. video so it's going to be amazing, Kaipacha. I think it's really cool and creative and supportive, it's really. And like you said, I mean, the hub, at the hub, we love the different perspectives. It's the whole point of having Astrology Hub is that, and, and there's, there's so much value in the different perspectives and the different voices and the different ways to interpret reality and for that to come together in a place where it all can be shared. It all can be, it all can be um, honored and cherished because there's a place for for all these different perspectives and we don't it doesn't have to be who's right or wrong it's it's let's look at it all let's look at it all the original name was unity and diversity whoa the original name of your event that was yeah that's that was what it was going to be when we titled it last year it was wow. be unity and because you know saturn and the group. but we've kind of you know now it's shaping a new paradigm mm. Both you good. know, because it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's, uh, we, we're not coming together, you know, unity and diversity quite as much as needing to, you know, really. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's more needed right now? Exactly. I mean, it's all needed, but definitely. Well, and that is part of shaping the new paradigm is unity and diversity, right? Yeah, ab absolutely. It's got yeah. To yeah. Would you like to bring up the. I sure verse will. again. So for those of you who joined us, you know, later, we started this talk with a verse from Rudolf Steiner, Kaipacha and I 
both um, love Rudolf Steiner's work. Um, and so we, we started with this verse and we're gonna end with this verse, which is what the Waldorf schools do a lot as um, you know, verses. Actually, I got this gardening verse from my daughter's gardening teacher. That, oh, God, I, I'll read that one to you at some point too, you guys. It's so good. <laughs> Your fingers on the, what is that? Oh, do you see my finger? Oh, did I not? Sh I, I thought I was sharing the screen. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> just screen. I was like, wait, maybe he wants us to see his ring for some reason. Is there no, no, no. I, I, I just went right to the thing without hearing it. <laughs> and that's the way you make it bigger. I, I messed it up. Okay. Oh, Perfect. sorry about that. A Verse for Our Times by Rudolf Steiner. <clears throat> We must eradicate, why don't you read it? I read it at the beginning. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> we must eradicate from the soul all fear and terror of what comes toward man and woman out of the future. We must acquire serenity in all feelings and sensations about the future. We must look forward with absolute equanimity to everything that may come. And we must think only that whatever comes is given to us by a world directive full of wisdom. It is part of what we must learn in this age, namely to live out of pure trust without any security in existence. Trust in the ever present help of the spiritual world, truly, nothing else will do if our courage is not to fail us. And let us seek the awakening from within ourselves every morning and every evening. Ah, <sighs> gonna be reading that one a lot. <laughs> we can put that in the description for you all too. So thank you, Kai Pacha. Thank you so much for being here. It's always such a pleasure to hear your thoughts and share your wisdom with our community. I'm serious. We love it. Thanks we love for it. having me, Amanda. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> I love coming. And I'm looking forward to December when I, when yes. I uh, come to uh, share in the inner circle. Oh my gosh, Kai Pacha, wow, we will be have been on such a journey by then. And I remember we were looking forward to you being the last inner circle guide of this year because of that Jupiter conjunction. So I mean more to come on that, I know. You betcha. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you all for joining. If you want to be alerted when we do these um, special edition episodes. And when, if you want to get a summary of all the special editions that I do, that we're doing here at Astrology Hub every week, you can go to astrologyhub.com slash podcast and just sign up to um, get the weekly digest pretty much. I don't have a name for it yet, but um, that just goes through the, all the different things that are available for you. So thank you everybody for joining us. And I can't wait to see you again soon tomorrow with Ann Ortley for our current astrological weather. All right, everybody, take care. Thank you, Kaibacha. Namaste. Hello.